welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 274. I am your host, Norman Sanso. Joining me today is Wills. Hello there, Norman. How's your day going today? Fine, thank you. Fine, thank you. It's been a pretty slow one, but still, it was pretty interesting. I did a lot of nothing, really. But that part there is for later on when we talk about what we've been doing with our week. But how about you? How are you doing? I am doing just fine and dandy. Why, the sun is shining, the birds are singing, and plowing into my window and dive-bombing it because they're being territorial and they see reflections of themselves, and they're really, really stupid. <laughs> that really happens, doesn't it? Yes, yes, and it makes a mess of the windows, and it's downright just a pain in the arse to clean. It's just like, oh, wow. dang it, wor- dang it, birds, quit, quit, quit plowing yourselves into a supposed reflection of yourself. It's basically, it's that comic of that dog. Who is that dog? And why is he here? <laughs> uh, well, that is one strange phenomenal event. Like, I don't think I have it here, so I can't relate. But still, that is just, hmm, wow. Yeah, birds just get territorial. They see another bird and they're like, hey, hey, what do you think you're doing here? Get out of here. This is my space. And they all fluff themselves up and then they see the other bird fluffing themselves out. And it's like, oh, oh, you want to do it like that, huh? You want to do it like that? You want to come at me? Okay, I'll come at you. Come at you. Oh, and it keeps flying into a window because <laughs> it's trying to fight something. That's them. <laughs> and that is why birds will never pass the turning test. <laughs> Unless they're crows. Crows are yeah. freaking smart. You do not mess with crows. Yeah. Uh, I saw a crow with a knife once. Did it cross his path again? You'll give me some french fries, see? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho, talking about events that I will never experience, San Diego Comic Con. Um, that happened last week, and it was oh, full I thought you of... were going to say love. <laughs> uh, what is love? Okay, but as you were saying, the San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, that happened last week. Uh, a lot of announcements um, were announced, especially from Marvel with its uh, movies and stuff, and also video games. Not much comic, though, even though the event is called San Diego Comic Con. It's a gigantic nerd convention. It's filled with nerds. Yes, true. Uh, but still, um, Hasbro had a presence over there and it had a lot of Transformers products and so on. And also My Little Pony stuff. But, well, if I were to talk about those things that we can't get, we'll be really jelly and it's not really the point. But still, um, San Diego Comic Con, a lot of celebrities went and they had a lot of fun. And most of the celebrities have children and they bring their kids there too. And guess what? Baby Schreiber, the VA for the Storm King, he went there with his son. And he was on Yahoo something or whatever. Whatever is that Yahoo has on their entertainment blog or whatever it is. Um, they did a talk <laughs> with... If you can call it an entertainment blog. I Yahoo. don't know. <laughs> they had videos and whatnot, but anywho, um, they did an interview with him, and um, they talk about the Storm King and stuff. And Levi here reveal a bit of the Storm King, his personality and whatnot. And yeah, uh, he said that he's a mean dude. He stole uh, who is the King of the Sea guy again? I forgot. Uh, Poseidon. Poseidon Strident. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, that, that's what uh, he said. I don't know if it's true or not. So, yeah. So, it's one of those things. Yeah, great. So, the guy steals tridents. <laughs> that, that's what he said. Oh, one more thing. Uh, they also mentioned about how um, there's a lot of fans from little boys to little girls to big boys and big girls. A brony shout out over there. So, yay. So, they do acknowledge the fandom is huge, ranging from uh, kids to all ages. And also, the Storm King. I can't wait to see the movie. From what I've read, the Storm King is a really confusing character. I haven't read any of the comics yet. And all I know is that he's a centaur-looking-like guy or a satyr-looking-like guy. And he's really tough-looking. And he's uh, the only line he's really sarcastic that I've seen in the trailer. So who knows what he could be like. 
that's the thing. When I see the trailer, when I read the books, this character here is confusing. He's meant to be the bad guy, but I don't know. Huh, still. Well, we'll see what he's like. True. And moving on to the next news. Wills, have you ever wanted to be in a movie, like dubbing for a movie or anything like that? Um... Dubbing for a movie, uh, I would like to do that, but there comes the practical skill, practical skill of, can I do that? The answer <laughs> is no, because the only language I know is English, HTML, and Unicode. <laughs> well, those uh, two back there are really, really important for uh, tech. But Computers, still... but not very good for, uh, not, not very good for, uh, you know, translating other languages. And even then, I'm not very good at Unicode. <laughs> no comment there, my friend. But <clears throat> uh, if you ever want to dub in German, by the way, you can do so. But how old are you now? Are you, are you in between 5 and 15? No? I, I'm guessing not then. <laughs> mm, okay. Well, 5 to 15 voice actors. So, well, I think that falls a little bit out of our purview then there. Yeah, true that. But still, it's one of those cool things because um, the My Little Pony movie in the German version is looking out for people who are interested in dubbing 4D movies. I think this is in collaboration with Toys R Us and they want those kids to have a chance to be in the movie. So yay, this is cool. This is really, really cool and awesome. How great German kids. So we get to hear little German... Well, thankfully... It's just for the German dub, so who knows how bad or good it will be. But it may be entertaining, because bad dubbing leads to some very hilarious things. Well, it's not a big role, it's just um, one of the backgrounds. And I think this is mostly a contest kind of deal for Tobits and Toys R Us. Oh, sure, a contest. They have one of those over there, but never over here. Heaven help them if they ever do a get your OC in the in the show thing. <laughs> Heaven help them if they ever do that. No comment. But still, um, <laughs> this is something cool that uh, the German groups or uh, German Hasbro is doing. Really, really cool. I can't wait to hear all the news pop up on EQD about this. That'll be really cool. And talking about movies and waiting to watch it. Um, you know, sometimes when you go to a movie, they have their exclusive um drink holder thingy, combo, whatever it is. You've seen one of those, right? They happen for Minion, they happen for Transformers, and so on. You remember those, right? Um, No, because I don't see crap. <laughs> really? <laughs> Do I look like the kind of person that would go watch Transformers or Minions in theaters? Please. Well, you go I watch something. Someone uploads a very horribly uploaded version on YouTube with a very shaky cell phone camera. I'm not giving them my hard-earned money for schlock. Well, but you do go watch other movies, and they do have it on display there for you to buy if you really want to. But you know Heck what I mean? No, right? man. Concessions at movie theaters—that's outrageous. That's highway robbery. I'm better off just giving my money away to charity, because at least then I'll feel good afterwards. Because if you buy theater popcorn, I'm always, like, rushing to the bathroom halfway through the third act. And then I miss everything. And I'm wondering, wait a minute, how did the Guardians save the galaxy? Or, wait, did the Avengers actually avenge anybody? I never find out, because I gotta run to the bathroom. So that is why concessions at movie theaters are horrible. Well... <laughs> I got no idea, <laughs> but still, I think that for this one, you might want to make an exception because for the My Little Pony movie, they are having this uh, special 22-ounce character mug with straw and said character is Pinkie Pie. So, yay, that's something to collect. Hmm, cool. And it's got a straw sticking right out of her poofy mane. So, you can act like the alien that you are and drink Pinky's brain through a bendy straw. Well, you do say that, but it's in her mane, so it could just be in a soda in her mane. I, I don't know. A soda. <laughs> I, so, I don't know. Who knows, man. She could have a punch bowl hidden there for all we know. Yeah, yo, it's Pinky. Her hair is a TARDIS. One thing's for sure. Pinky will be delicious. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, no comment on that one. But for people at home who are wondering how big or how much is 22 ounce, uh, just imagine, uh, approximately, uh, six bottles or six can of Coke. Well, it depends what size of cans you, you have, man. Yeah, Cause, you know, the regular ones, the regular ones. Over here, well, no, over here in America, the can, average size of a can of Coke is 12 ounce. A bottle of Coke is around 20. And, really? Uh, yes. You don't have any regular can anymore? Like the standard uh, can? What? You mean like eight ounce cans? The only yeah. thing that comes in eight ounce, well, yeah, you can buy that, you can buy eight ounce cans of stuff around here, but the only thing I've really seen eight ounce cans is V8 vegetable juice. Really? Everybody no. else is, yeah, everything else is just like, why would you have a drink that's in an eight ounce can? That's barely enough to get a swig out of. Huh, okay, uh, I guess it's just locations then, because over here, we still have the eight ounce can, like that's a normal occurrence. And six a six packs of eight ounce cans. That's like a it's like one big glass for me. Oh, okay. Well, like but I then said, again, to each his own. I have a soda addiction. Yeah, but I I don't like. I'm just saying um, things that I seen and referencing. That you you know what bottle of can like just imagine two twelve ounce bottle. Like yeah, that that's how much of a drink it's in. Pinky, yay. <laughs> and moving on to the last news. We get a reveal of who the writers for the season finale is. And would you believe it or not? It's Josh Heber and Nicole uh, DeBuck. Hmm. Cool. Heber's back and writing the season finale. It should be good. Yeah, but still, um, Heber was not on. Like, people were, um, there's a long tweet conversation going on. Um, Someone mentioned or someone asked, uh, I take, I take if you already know how the season finale goes. Nicole replied intimately and MK2 replied, uh, Nicole and Josh knows more than I do, but they give me the scoop. So the same guy asked, Heber, didn't he leave after season six finale to work on other shows like New Skylanders Academy on Netflix? MK Toon replied, he did, but then ellipses. Hmm. But then, dun dun dun, who knows? Yeah, true. One of those things. But still, surprise, surprise, we get Haber back, and personally, I do like Haber's writing. It'll be interesting to see what they've crouped up for the uh, season finale. I'm actually wondering, uh, is the season finale going to be coming around near the time of the movie being premiered? Episode is coming back next week, Saturday. And it'll be August, one, two, three, four. September, one, two, three, four. And then October, yeah, so that's eight. And then October, we get like, looks like nine, so that's nine. Possible. Wouldn't that be crazy? If you want to know what happens in the movie, you'll have to see the television show. Oh, no. No. Oh, uh, no, those kind of things. No. But still, um, from what I do understand of the season finale, it's related to the comic Legend of Magic. Something like that. I don't really know. And also, it could be related to issue 51 to 53. So, it's, it has something to do with that. I don't really know. It will be interesting to find out, though. We will just have to wait and see. True, true. And, well, that's this week's news. And, well, let's head into our favorite topic. What have we been doing with our week? So, Wills, what have you been doing, man? Well, um, work, work, and a old game that's only been released last year, but it's called Orcs Must Die Unchained. That's right, Norman. Orcs Must Die Unchained. The third game of the Orcs Must Die series, which has decided to go, as of just this April, free-to-play. Now, you may be thinking, oh, no, not another one of those free-to-play games, but here's the advantage. You see, unlike most other free-to-play games, which try to pay you through power, this game is the good kind, the one where you can earn everything, even the game's premium currency, 
by just playing the game. That's right. You can earn everything playing the game. You can earn the skins. You can earn the characters. You can earn the traps, and you can earn the power-ups. Everything can be earned just by playing the game. Nothing is locked behind a paywall. You only pay if you want to actually speed up everything else. That's it. I've been having a great time playing it for the past week, and I guarantee if you like third-person shooters trapped with a trap dungeon game, guaranteed this will be the kind of game for you, along with its very witty sense of humor. And if that isn't a giant sell, uh, giant uh, selling case right there, uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, I'm just a shell now, Norman. That's all I am. I'm a shell. <laughs> you sell out. <laughs> but no, the the game is the game is basically a third person shooter slash not a tower defense, but a trap defense. Basically, enemies are going to move around along a semi-predetermined path. You can actually adjust it with some traps or barricades. And basically, you set up traps that you can combo with other traps. Like, let's say you got a, a tar pit that will slow them down. And then while they're being slowed, wall traps like arrows or lightning shooting out of it or a swinging pendulum mace of doom swinging back and forth or a giant smushing, like having the ceiling just come down on top of them, smush! Or just giant spikes out of the ground. There's there's a lot of different traps with a lot of different combos you can do. And you then also play as a hero, which each hero has their own special things and their own special abilities to help. Some even have certain bonuses with other certain traps, like giving certain traps better defense or giving traps better attack or even some being free. It sounds like almost tower defense, but instead oh, yeah, of... Yeah, that- Def- de- definitely, but instead of towers, you're building traps itself. And the game has a very, very silly sense of humor to it. One of the better jokes is when you, I mean, you're slaughtering hundreds of these orcs, and they each say different things, like, oh, I think I stubbed my toe, he <laughs> says as his decapitated head flies past you. <laughs> or uh one gets smushed into a wall, I'm coming, Elizabeth! <laughs> but, oh, but if you wow. watch Sanford and Son, you get that one. <laughs> oh, well. But still, <clears throat> it sounds like you're having a lot of fun with it. Like, yeah, okay. I, I seen the game in action, and yeah, it's not my kind of game. Like, sorry, man, but it's something that I'm not into. Eh, no one's into everything. Mm-hmm. Nah, but it's been keeping my sanity for the past week with full time of work and um overtime of work. Well, overtime's so. good. How much are you getting? One point five. Yeah, one point five, basically. Oh. But it's still annoying because. <laughs> I mean, it's time I could be doing anything else. True, like, true. Playing more Orcs Must Die! No, no, <laughs> not more. no. That is not my life. My life is not playing a game. Or oh, God. No. <laughs> oh, let's hope not. Uh, well, anything else? Um, other than that, uh, actually at work I've been listening to a bunch of, uh, uh let's reads or, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, dramatic readings, basically. People who read fan fictions or whatnot. And I found a guy called, uh, well, I just recently found him. He's been doing stuff for a while, named Wooten. Wooten? Yeah, he's, uh, he does a great job of narration. He finds some pretty good voice actors and his editing is top notch. Um, I've been mm-hmm. listening to a lot of his stories. They rain, he seems to do a lot of, um, uh, anon related stories. Oh, that so he reads. talking My Little Pony then? Oh yes, yes, yes. It's it's MLP related, but um, the the fix he finds are just downright funny, and his narration slash editing goes so well with the writing. It, it it increases the humor of the situation. Plus, he yeah. finds very some even almost sounding exactly like the characters. Nice. Mm-hmm. So all uh, he doesn't release that much right now. He's been doing a D and D stuff recently, but I've been mm. going through his backlog, and there's a lot of really good stuff there. And also, through him, another great uh, person to listen to. She does comic dubs and also does um, dramatic readings, too. Scribbler. Oh. Um, scrib- uh, she's the voice. She's the voice actress herself. and uh, But she does a lot of comic dubs. And yeah, uh, I, they're, she does a great job with them, too. Yeah, we had her on before. I remember her. She she was uh, an old, old guest, like way back when. Well, she's still doing it. Doing great. Still. Cool. That is that is awesome. Like um, fic reading, those were really popular back in the days. I wonder what happened now. Well, just some people moved on to do other things. Some just lost interest, and a combination of well, all the good people who did a lot of good editing, 
you know, just didn't find any stories that they felt like editing together. They just, any number of reasons. Hmm, I mean, there's people that still do it. If you search for it, you can find it. I, I can, I can understand. It's one of those things. But still, um, we, we should really, or people should really do more fic reading. It's a, it's a dying art. Yeah. You know what? Maybe I should do something about that. (laughs) Yay. Something for you to do. Yes, yes. Dramatic fic readings. I can see it now, Norman. Willison presents a reading of My Little Pony Fan Fiction. Yay. Gosh, does that sound completely idiotic. But <laughs> dang it, does it sound cool. <laughs> that could work. That could really, really work. People, yeah, That's a great <laughs> idea. Let's just go, let's go to Fim Fiction right now and find a title. No, 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 no. Let, let's not, let's yes, not now. Let, let's not now. <laughs> um, okay, let's see here. Uh, no, that's too explicit. That's too explicit. Well, that's way too explicit. That's a troll fic. <laughs> and that's a self-insert fanfiction. That's self-insert fanfiction. That's a very bad fanfiction. And that's more too explicit. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Original, <laughs> oh. Oh, it, it, oh, this one's original, but it has Starlight Glimmer in it. Never mind. There's nothing of interest here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, but still, <clears throat> bad decisions aside, <laughs> uh, what happened with my week? Well, honestly, nothing really. Um, today I did a bit of tidying up of the place, so it looks a bit cleaner. That's about it. But honestly, uh, when it comes to video games, Doomfist just came out. Got to play him a bit. And yeah, he's fun. He's fun. Uh, what can I say more about him? He's a bit like Genji, um, except... It's not Terry more... Crews, dang it. It's not Terry yeah, Crews. Yeah, I know. But he... <laughs> Terry Crews will be playing something. It's on his IMDb. He will be playing something. I want him to play... You know what would be awesome if you could play, man? An Omnic. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did, didn't you... I would love to have an Omnic with Terry Crews' voice behind it. Weren't you the one that suggested this before? Or was it somebody else? If I did, I've forgotten that I suggested it. But then again, I'm very smart. So I thought about it. I'm so smart, I thought about the idea twice, even though I forgot about it. That's how cool I am. It could be Twilight. I forgot. It's been a while. But still, yeah. Him playing Romnick? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he just screams, power! No, no, no. I don't don't want him to be the, the meme machine. I want him... I mean, Terry Crews is a great actor. I mean, but yeah, when he gets intense, he can be intense. But not, 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 not uh, old spice. Uh, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want him like to rehash. I mean, he could do a, a joke reference to it, but I prefer to have him be his like in, in intense. Uh, uh, dang it! What's the show? The cop show he's in? I keep forgetting that one. Uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. No, uh, but you know he's in a he's a, he's in a show about police, right? Yeah, I think so. I've heard of it, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I, I've seen pictures okay. of it. When it, when he go when he when he when he's intense on that show, it, it's just like the kind of thing where you're like, okay, back away from the very scary big fan. <laughs> true, true. I would love to have him do something like that with Anomnic. Oh. Just, ha- just have this most have this robot be the most intense robot you've ever experienced. <laughs> that could happen, and you know what? Um, BlizzCon is happening, so probably there's an announcement there. So yay! Oh, that would be cool. So yeah, the, uh, besides that, um, playing with a bit of Doomfist, and um, well, when it comes to other media things, uh, nothing much really. Um, haven't been watching any movie. Um, well, they ain't true, but it ain't a lie at the same time. I've picked up UHF. Uh, Weird Al's really, really old movie, I think 1981, and Ooh. watch a bit of it, and it's fun. It is fun. I kind of wished he would make more movies, or at least, I don't, I don't, I don't, did he direct that, or did he just, was he the main star of it? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I do know that he is the main star, but uh, in terms of directing it, I'm not 100% sure. Let me double check, because, no, 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 it, the director is a guy called J... Levy, L-E-V-E-Y? Levy? J. Levy? Mm-mm. J. Levy. What has he done? Ah, he's been doing a lot of things with Weird Al in terms of TVs and movies. 
Yeah, he's only been doing things with Al, from what I can tell here. Hmm. Cool. So talking about movies, right? Um, this is a bit more local, but um, a local cinema chain here is gauging the interest in the My Little Pony movies for the Brony fandom in Malaysia. And if it's possible, they really want to know how interest we how interested we are in attending. And for you locals out there who are listening to this, um, there's a Facebook page up and they're doing a poll. Um, the last I saw it was at 30 votes. So there's no limit. The more the better. Tickets right now is to be expected at 30 to 50 ringgit. This includes goodie bags and probably that Pinkie Pie drink thingy. So, yay, um, I do highly suggest you guys go and click on the voting thing because more people means more interest means we get to see the movie locally. Because if not, we got no idea when or where we'll be able to watch it. Not like Will here because I know his theater is going to bring it up. Yeah, uh, definitely. I actually got a couple plans to see it with uh, one friends, some friends in one state, then go to the next over state and see it with them there. Lucky you! You get you. You at least get to go watch it like in a regular basis without thinking. Oh, is it going to be shown? Is it going to be shown? Is it going to be shown? Like, is it going to be shown with the advertisement? I mean, this is a lot bigger than EQG that they're doing with the amount of advertisement they're doing on this one. It sounds like it'll be in a lot more theaters. Well, yeah, I do hope so, and I do hope so. The local market here is going to get it because if not. Ah, uh, it's time to wait for the DVD or Blu-ray. Mm. Oh well, so anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, and you can reach me personally at Norman Sanzo. Will, where can the good people find you? You can find me at uh, Wilson uh, on Tim... on Tim... 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 Andy Timby! <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Now you can find me on Twitter under Willison. You can also find me on Film Fiction under Willison. And you can also find me on DeviantArt under Willison. It's basically Willison. That's that's my name everywhere. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> and also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyForLife.com. Links are in the show notes. And also, do catch our new show, the NBA Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast, also available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you get me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, and also Guest of the Week. Talk about the My Little Pony movie episodes and also comics. And um, we do do other stuff like video games, other movies, and also other series and also discussions. So do check us out over there. And if you would like to support the show, you can do so at www.patreon.com slash the MBS show. And also with every support, you'll get full access to the content and also early access to the discussion and review episodes. And a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, i like to thank Darker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Nandrakatoria, Starstream, Master of Leg, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much guys for the support. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. Yeah, you have been Will. And we'll guys catch you next week with another episode of MBS Show. See ya. To the loop.